Hi everyone, I'm Anton, and it's an honor to me to present our work on applying generative adversarial networks, GANs, to the task of synthesizing biological images. As of today, biology has many different imaging techniques that can produce a lot of data. Such images are very different from natural images, but are also very interesting and important to analyze. To give you an example of what I'm talking about, I am showing you some images of fish and yeast cells obtained with a technique called fluorescence microscopy. This technique can capture the amount of different proteins at different locations of the cell. In these images, the red and the green channels correspond to some proteins that are of interest for biologists. If we apply GANs to such images, they simply work well and generate something that looks very real, even for experts. But are such generators useful? By useful, I mean, can they lead to new breakthroughs in biology? Well, apparently, if you don't do anything else, then the answer is no. Because biologists can already obtain a lot of real images like that, and they don't want even more fake ones. One way to be useful is to synthesize something that biology cannot easily obtain. This can give a new point of view that can be used to hypothesize about what actually happens in the cells. One big limitation of this imaging technique, fluorescence microscopy, is that it can image only two or three channels at the same time due to overlaps in absorption and emission spectra. But there are at least hundreds of proteins of interest, and the most interesting thing to study is how they interact with each other and how they colocalize. For that, it would be neat if one could observe them all together. And this is exactly a place where generative models could be useful. In the end of the day, we use GANs to synthesize multi-channel images with all channels synchronized, given only the two-channel training data. To achieve this goal, we avoid conditional image generation, because it's hard to generate multiple different images conditioned on the same input image. Instead, we use a special architectural trick, which we call channel separation, which consists in introducing a causal dependency of the green channel on the red channel. To avoid mode collapse, we use a modern improved Wasserstein gun training technique. We also pay a lot of attention to quantitative evaluation and use the so-called neural network two sample test to compare different generators. Uh, to give you a teaser of what we achieved, uh, I'm showing you a visualization of multi-channel images produced by our models that were trained exclusively on two-channel data. In this vis visualization, each row shows six different proteins in the green channel that are all aligned with the same red channel. Different columns correspond to different proteins of interest represented by the green channel. To construct each of vis these visualizations, we manually pick three synthetic images corresponding to different stages of the cell growth and interpolate between them by using the great circle in the latent space. The result roughly mimics the growth of, real, of the real cells. First, each cell grows on one side, then it grows on both sides, then it prepares to divide into the two daughters. The speed of the growth, of course, has nothing to do with the real speed. If you are interested in how exactly we did it and what exactly we did, or just want to chat about GANs and cells, please come to our poster. Thank you very much.